do you look like this? Or been told you have anterior pelvic tilt? In this video, we'll cover what it is, what you can do about it, and when you should worry about it. If you want a certain part of the video, just go ahead and skip to it. Anterior pelvic tilt refers to a position of the pelvic bone. You can think of the pelvis like a bucket of water. Anterior tilt is when that bucket tilts forward so that the water would pour out the front. Posterior tilt is the opposite when the bucket tilts backward. The pelvis also connects directly to the spine, so pelvic tilt position also influences lower back position. Anterior tilt coincides with lumbar extension, posterior tilt with lumbar flexion, which leads us to why people are told that anterior pelvic tilt is a problem. When the pelvis tilts anteriorly and the lower back arches, two things occur. First, more compression and bony contact of the vertebral joints of the low back. And second, unequal distribution of force on our spinal discs. Historically, thought was that this causes low back pain, and it makes sense when you hear it at first. However, reality is much more complicated. I'll explain why later on in this video. Most of you watching just want the exercises, so we'll talk about those and then come back. To improve anterior tilt, we want to improve flexibility of two muscles and the strength of two others. Shown are exercises to address the first flexibility limitation. Left is easier, right is more advanced. These improve flexibility of the hip flexors or iliopsoas muscle. As you see, this muscle attaches from the thigh bone to the lower back vertebral bones. Think of it like a string attached on either end. When you shorten the string, it pulls the objects on either Either end together. In this case, it pulls the thigh bone and lower back bone together, pulling the spine into an arced position and the pelvis into anterior tilt, which is why limitations in iliopsoas flexibility can contribute. Next up are exercises to address the second flexibility limitation. Left is easier, right is more advanced. These improve flexibility of the latissimus dorsi. As you can see, this muscle attaches from the lower back and pelvic bone up to the arms. Think again of that string. If shortened, the low back and pelvis will be pulled into extension and anterior tilt, which is why limitations in latissimus flexibility can contribute. Shown here are the first strength exercises. Left is easier, right is again harder. These improve glute strength. The glutes attach from the pelvic bone to leg bone, and when they contract, they posteriorly tilt the pelvis meaning they reverse and pull you out of anterior pelvic tilt. Premise is that the stronger your glutes become, the more easily you can pull yourself out of and hold yourself out of anterior pelvic tilt. Shown here are the second strength exercises. Left is still easier, right is a harder version. These improve strength of part of the abdominal muscles. As you see, these muscles attach from rib cage to pelvic bone. They also posteriorly tilt the pelvis when they contract. Premise is the same. Stronger and better control of these muscles makes it easier to get out of anterior tilt. If you want more exercises or a structured week by week program, then check out my phone app. That's my approach with exercise. Big picture, think of it as three phases. First, gain the ability to get out of anterior pelvic tilt by addressing any flexibility limitations preventing us from doing so. Second, gain strength to hold yourself out of that position for a longer period of time and under heavier loads, which is done through the strength exercises. Finally, number three, to identify and carry that over to the activities in your daily life where you notice anterior tilt occurring and or it bothering you. Continuously go and practice not allowing yourself to go into anterior tilt with that activity. Theory is with time and enough practice, it becomes more automatic. With that said, Said, let's rewind to earlier. Why can we not easily say that anterior pelvic tilt is bad? Well, for many decades it was thought to be bad, and schools taught that it was, because intuitively it seems like it would be based on the anatomy mentioned earlier. But only recently did we actually have studies testing to see if it causes problems. There have been three big findings. First, 
anterior tilt appears to be the normal posture of humans. 85% of males and 75% of females have anterior tilt and none had pain or problems. This makes sense because our lumbar vertebra are shaped so that the spine naturally falls into an extended position, which then naturally makes the pelvis tilt anteriorly. A fair critique is most people being a certain way doesn't mean it's good. If 85% of people were obese, that still doesn't make it healthy. But that brings us to number two. Studies have not found a relationship between anterior tilt and back pain, meaning anterior tilt does not seem to cause any detriment to our health, unlike obesity. And number three, people with back pain had the same amount of anterior tilt as those who had no pain. This means we cannot say that the tilt was the cause of the pain because they were both the same. So it must have been something else. So if it's normal and it doesn't cause pain, then why is it demonized so much online? I see two reasons. One, and most of it, is that those people are trying to sell you something, like their services, or at least get attention on social media. Two, and less malicious, is most people are not up to date with the evidence. Schools have taught for literally decades that anterior tilt is bad. The studies I just mentioned are only about five to 10 years old. Many schools haven't updated the curriculum because it is a slow bureaucratic process. And most people who graduated years ago aren't nerdy like me reading this stuff for fun. So they likely are not learning the new research. To conclude, am I saying that you should never work on anterior tilt? Not quite. There are some situations where it can be helpful. Shown here are a few examples when that might be the case. The main one I wanna talk about though is number four. When your back pain is predictably aggravated by the tilt position. Individuals with spinal stenosis, spondylolisthesis, or facet joint pain tend to fall here. Anterior tilt places more force on the tissues involved in those conditions. So changing posture to reduce the force placed on those tissues by reducing tilt can help recovery. But it's really important to note here that this does not apply to all back pain conditions. For others, like some disc herniations, being in anterior tilt may actually feel better and help their recovery because it changes where the force and tissue stress is being placed, because the tissues implicated in that condition is different, and so different postures place force in different places. The end takeaway is that there is no one size fits all. The vast, vast majority of people do not need to worry about their anterior tilt. However, there are exceptions as to every rule.